Okay, I'm sat with uh, Dr. Ryle here talking about sport and philosophy of sport in particular. The last question um, that I had for you, Emily, was um, people often think about sport in terms, in certain sports, particularly of grace and beauty. Even football gets called the beautiful game. So in the shortest possible question, is sport art? Is sport art? Again, there's been a lot written about that, um, particularly in the 1970s, um, and it's sort of... Um, it's debatable. I, I think sport isn't art because it's sport, um, yeah. and okay. there isn't the same kind of intentionality behind it. That doesn't mean that some sport can't be beautiful um, or can't be artistic. And there's obviously the aesthetic sports, which are judged in part on um, they have a whole category uh, yeah, of, of, of aesthetic, yeah. artistic elements. Um, so sport as incredibly beautiful aspects of it but I wouldn't say that it's art. So on one hand you've got sport which intends to be beautiful you can have um, gymnastics of some sort and um, then other sports which don't look beautiful like cricket there's something beautiful like watching you know, sweaty men waving about bits of wood. Well you say that but some yeah, people I'm sure would. people immediately think what? <laughs> uh, but also even ones where there's not that obvious aesthetic thing um, they can be incredibly moving you know we, we see people crying we saw recently lots of Brazilian kids picked out by the camera crying when their team was so roundly beaten. Um, so that's a sense in which it embodies kind of dramatic art, so tragedy yeah. of art. So there's that sense, I guess, in which you might kind of think of it as more aesthetic as well. So there's, you know, sport, aesthetic elements of sport, playing sport, but also watching sport. Um, so sport mm. as spectacle, sport as kind of dramatic, as, as very, yeah, as drama, very, very emotional, um, because people are bound up with it, you know, what happens, they care about what happens. There's, hu there's great stories and narratives that go on behind uh, sports and sporting personalities. So I guess on occasion you have that great narrative drive and the drama that's associated with that mixed also with the aesthetic. So I know some people become very kind of emotional about things like boxing. I mean, it's not a sport I'm particularly excited by, but some of you talk about the kind of how it, something about the human body being kind of pushed and that very kind of under huge amounts of stress and achieving whatever it can, and mixed up with these very strong narratives, sometimes rather constricted, sometimes very kind of um, genuine personal. Those two coming together, I guess, can be kind of very evocative people. Mm. I think that there's, there's something interesting to be said about. Um, and what sport is really about is what the body can do and how it can perform. And there's a, there seems to be a relationship between skill and excellence of skill and beauty. So often, you know, the most, the most skillful performers also have a grace and a beauty associated with them. And, we, you know, we often talk about experts in sport as making it look so easy, making it mm. look as if they're not even trying because they've got this kind of efficiency and beauty of movement. So there does seem to be a relationship between skill and beauty there. Something about something about kind of having being kind of mastery of your own body or being yep. in command of it. I think it seems to perhaps get at something we desire from our bodies, but most of us so rarely you know we go for this organ and clumsy and you know not not in command and not kind of the masters of our own kind of and that's why I think we see, you know, we're also seeing this uh, sort of almost resurgence in what uh, these extreme sports. So, mm. you know, what the body can achieve. So we see people jumping off buildings or cliffs and seeing, mm. you know, and these bird men with these wing suits. Yes. And it looks, it looks incredible. And it's also, it's also a dramatic spectacle because you know that they could fall to their death at any moment. Yeah. Um, and they often do fall to their death. So, um, and it, there is a real kind of beauty associated with it, with, with pushing the body to the limits and seeing what the human body can, can achieve. So interesting how can we, we start to see, and I guess for a long period as humans have seen, we see the, the bodies of sport people as the ideal human form. You know, they get kind of elevated as what it is to be beautiful. I think so. You know, you obviously have the, you know, the, the, the ancient Greek yeah. athletes, the discus throwers, which epitomise this, this beautiful mm. form. Um, and, you know, the athletes are often upheld as being beautiful bodies. And that's in quite contrast to the alternative narratives of beauty in our culture about bodies in terms of the fashion industry and things. So I guess there's a tension there where some would want to promote sporting bodies as beautiful as good and you know thin waif like um, fashionista um, bodies as bad so it's easy to get drawn into a kind of qualitative binary there about it being a good thing but you also get this other extreme so you know professional bodybuilders that are sculpting mm. their bodies and it almost becomes 
you know, so grotesque and extreme because they're pushing their bodies to these so forms the, that... the desirable aesthetic within the sport doesn't match the desirable aesthetic outside of it at all. Yeah, and also you get, you know, you, you get so many different types of sporting bodies that are really functional, so weightlifters, you know, huge functional strength, but we might not, you know, look at them and say that they're the that's epitome what, of the yeah. beautiful body. Yeah, so that's quite, there's actually, it's a lot more kind of complicated than it seems. And I guess a lot of those things that we think of as the ideal of health and beauty, um, actually a lot of athletes after their professional careers suffer a, a kind of lifetime of health problems. Well, that's one of the other things about sport. Is it good for you? Not necessarily. I mean, you, you, you speak to most people that have been involved in sport and they've got various niggles and, and broken bones and so uh, problems. So people at the elite level certainly will carry, have a lifetime of carrying quite serious exactly. injuries. So sport isn't necessarily good for you. I'll remember that next time I sat on my sofa. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.